Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another Super Cheese video. And Death Knights are absolutely back in the war within. This is a talent tree that has been hotly awaited for the Rider of the Apocalypse. This is a talent tree deriving its essence from Warcraft 3 and Arthas being one of the primary Death Knights in that game mode. He was riding on a mount 100% of the time. And what have Death Knights? been lacking for some time well that would be mobility and that seems to no longer be the case this is quite an extraordinary talent tree for the class and is definitely making specs like frost and unholy death knight highly appealing so let's take a first look at this riders champion spending runes has a chance to call forth the aid of a horseman for 10 seconds you can summon in mograine who will cast death and decay at his location that will follow his position this will allow great cleave damage, by the way. If this is the Death and Decay following this guy running around attacking people and you can cleave two targets with the baseline cleave abilities that Frost and Unholy have, that's going to be really gnarly. White Mane casts Undeath on your target, dealing Shadow Frost damage per stack every three seconds for 24 seconds. Each time Undeath deals damage, it gains a stack and cannot be refreshed. Additionally, adding more diseases on top of everything as well to this, which is going to be really nice. Trollbane will cast Chain of ice on your target, slowing their movement speed by 70% and increasing the damage they take from you by 5%, so just flat out 5% damage, and also you can save some runes on Chains of Ice for snaring targets, because he's going to automatically snare it for you. Nazgrim. While Nazgrim is active, you gain apocaly Apocalyptic Conquest, increasing your strength by 5%, so flat out throughput quality of life improvements from this really plays heavily on the fantasy of the death knight bringing in literally the four horsemen into combat with you seems really awesome just as a staple on the front end and as we move into the right side well, there you go on a pale horse is what it was called um in warcraft 3 while outdoors you are able to mount your archerist death charger in combat now outdoors is you know that's pretty open-ended so i'm assuming you know some raids are outdoors every once in a while how many dungeons are outdoors you know one of the mythic plus dungeons in the pool that i'm spacing out of the name right now is completely outside where you drag and ride so would you be able to ride it on that arena maps some of them are you know most of them are outside you can mount on your regular mount right battlegrounds so like what is the extent of while outdoors does this mean just world content because you know permanently being on your mount at mount speed is going to be really good uh in a lot of different scenarios depending on the definition of that but if it does end up being limited the secondary portion of this is death charge which is going to replace death's advance you're going to call upon the death charger to break free of movement impairing effects and for 10 seconds while upon your death charger your movement speed is increased by 100 percent you cannot be slowed and you are immune to forced movement effects and knockbacks so a super powered up version of the paladin and charger um, during moments of time so if this does end up not being usable in a huge amount of cases although it seems pretty open you will have this to rely on you're gonna be getting a lot of extra mobility with this one uh, also I think you get multiple charges of death's advance at the moment so you'd be getting multiple charges of this as well white mains famine when your diseases deal damage to an enemy affected by undeath it gains another stack additionally when undeath deals damage it infects nearby enemies so spreading plague and disease really hitting the fantasy hard for death knight here hungering thirst the damage of your diseases frost strike and death coil are just flat out increased by 15 percent mograine's might your damage is increased by five percent and you gain the benefits of your death and decay while inside mograine's death and decay uh they do have a developer no, uh, while not directly related um, to the Rider of the Apocalypse tree, we know that both Sand Lane and Rider trees have talents that interact with Death and Decay, and we'd like to avoid those talents drawing too much focus of feedback uh, as we have some plans. So basically, you know, it's basically Rune of Power, right? They're a bit worried about you having to stay in, in the middle of it, so I'm curious to see if they can kind of deal with those potential problems that, that come into play with this Death and Decay playstyle. I think having... Mograine move with you and Death and Decay move with you is going to make it less of a problem. Uh, so hopefully it's not going to be too much of an issue. Nazgrim's Conquest. If an enemy dies while Nazgrim is active, the strength of Apocalyptic Conquest is increased by 3%. Additionally, each rune you spend increases its value by 1%. Now, this is pretty much only useful in dungeons um, where you're able to actively kill, you know, 
creatures pretty frequently, you're going to get a pretty significant boost from this, but it's pretty much dead passive in PvP. Even in Battlegrounds, it's going to be tough to get a lot of value out of this. Fury of the Horseman. Every 50 runic power you spend extends the duration of Horseman's aid uh, in combat by one second up to five seconds, so you can keep them up for a longer duration. A Feast of Souls. While you have two or more Horsemen aiding you, your runic power spending abilities deal 20% increased damage and have a 10% chance to refund a rune. That's a lot of extra burst damage here. Uh, considering the capstone talent of this whole tree when we get down to it, that's gonna be really impressive. Now onto the side here, we got a choice node, Horseman's Aid. While at your aid, the Horseman will occasionally cast Anti-Magic Shell on you and themselves at 80% effectiveness. So if you're worried about these guys getting CC'd, they're not gonna get CC'd. And are they all gonna cast it? Like what if you have multiple of them out and you're just permanently Anti-Magic Shelled, riding on a mount, immune to magic the whole time? This seems really broken busted what the heck is even going on right now with death knights dude on this talent tree pact of the apocalypse when you take damage five percent of the damage is redirected to each active horseman so you can get physical damage reduction against physical classes in pvp or physical situations or a really overpowered magical one and cc immunity one here on the top side Trollbane's Icy Fury. When you obliterate or scourge strike a target affected by Trollbane's Chains of Ice, it shatters, dealing Shadow Frost damage to nearby enemies and will slow them by 40% for four seconds. A little bit of a, you know, kind of a trivial snare, but extra cleave damage is going to be really good for Frost. And honestly, as Unholy with this Death and Decay moving around with Mograine, um, being able to get a lot of extra cleave and AoE is going to be really nice. Moss Sworn Menace. The cooldown of your Horn of Winter and Unholy Blight is reduced by 15 seconds and your death and decay is reduced by 10 seconds so just a little bit of extra utility towards your class and then finally we have the capstone the creme de la creme the absolute pinnacle apocalypse now now it might be a very small looking tooltip but there's a lot of power packed in that small package okay army of the dead and Frostworm's Fury will call upon all four horsemen to aid you. And remember, when you have two or more, runic power abilities are going to do more damage. You're going to get all of those effects stacked on each other, which is extra sustained disease damage, extra AoE and cleave damage from the Death and Decay, extra single target burst from the Chains of Ice. Um, you're going to be absolutely disgusting. You're going to be moving so fast. You're going to have all these extra additional things. They're going to be anti-magic shielding themselves to immune roots and stuff, I would imagine. This this is looking like a really, really, really disgustingly powerful tree um, for Death Knight specifically. It also means more pets swarming the screen in PvP, which I'm not too sure about. Um, and some of the CC immunities are pretty bonkers. But this is honestly not even the most bonkers of the upcoming talent trees for The War Within. So if you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with those, then make sure to smash the subscribe button. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.